Earlier this month, we saw the official Korean release of Throne and Liberty. Now, What's I've been this? keeping a close eye on this, as this is, I think, one of the few good-looking MMOs planned to launch globally in 20. Well, what was really funny about the uh, the Throne and Liberty thing is the fact that the game, whenever they originally showed it, looked really good. And then the first beta test was so bad, it caused, I think it was NetEase, to lose 10% of their stock. That's how bad it was. 24. Naturally, now that the game is live and playable in Korea, mm -hmm. I wanted to know what people thought. Yeah. Uh, while we do expect there to be some difference and they changed between it a the lot. Korean and global versions, fact is, much of the core game will almost certainly stay the same. Sure. So with that said, how is the it? Problem like, what the do combat. people think about Throne and Liberty now that they've played it? Uh -huh. Well, for starters, good news is that it looks like the game itself is actually quite good. After what? implementing changes based on beta feedback, most of the major gameplay and system... See, you know, after implementing changes based Based off of stock feedback if those stocks didn't go down i bet the game wouldn't have changed that much because this is what's so crazy right is that oh well we can't just revamp the whole can't just change the combat system i mean that would be wait the stock went down change the whole combat system right now okay yeah it's done great that's how it works complaints have been addressed to the point where people seem to really enjoy playing Throne in Liberty. Pretty much all of the reviews that I have watched and read have been mostly positive about the game with wow. a few noteworthy exceptions and complaints about some specific elements, which we will of course cover. But overall, yes, it seems like people like Throne in Liberty. Now one of the major things energy. is the yeah. combat. The once static, heavily rooted combat mm -hmm. system that had little to no yeah, movement did one, get a total myself. overhaul. It now looks to be much more in line with other modern day tab target MMOs, allowing for the use of basic attacks and many skills while on the move, having some built-in movement to certain skills like- Yeah, melee. all this looks okay. I mean, none of this looks like, listen, none of this looks really great, okay? But it's like, all right, I could see myself wasting a month of my time playing this, this thing, sure attacks that lunge you forward, for example, while also uh -huh. having some abilities that do root you in place, specifically for some of the more heavy hitting attacks or channeled spells. Yeah. So now, instead of being forced to stand completely motionless to perform 99% of attacks and do any damage, Throne of Liberty's combat is much more balanced and along the lines of other this popular looks... tap target games. Such that as... looks pretty good. Like, let's go back to this real quick motionless to perform 99% of attacks and do any damage, Throne of Liberty's combat is much this more is balanced decent. and along the lines Look of this. other popular tap target games, All right. such as World of Warcraft. Not so bad. Final Fantasy XIV or Star Wars The Old Republic. And to be clear, the issue was never that you had to stand still mm -hmm. sometimes to attacks, because that's actually quite normal in tab target MMOs. No, it was the fact that you had well, to stand still with melee attacks instantly to do any damage whatsoever. If you or your target moved, no attacks happened. So combat basically devolved into these standoffs where both players would sit motionless, staring deep into each other's eyes while spamming abilities. And if you- That sounds like RuneScape. Yeah, that's the way RuneScape is. Or your opponent didn't want to fight anymore, you just had to turn around and walk away. And yeah. for melee classes, that meant having to chase them until they decided to stop moving, because while they were moving, you were not doing any damage ever. So if they just kept walking away, you couldn't do anything. You would just keep chasing them. Reminds me of New World. Oh God, remember New World? Oh, oh, he's coming after me. We gotta run. Oh, he's running after me. Oh, I'm gonna get out of there. So they Jesus stood still. Christ. If they didn't stand still, Oh well, too bad, the life but yes, now with these yeah, the, changes whoa. in place, there is much more balance to the combat. Yeah, I that. You can basic attack while running, cast many of your abilities yeah. on the move, and even gain ground with certain abilities that act as gap closers. So yeah, it is now much more like what you are probably familiar with if you have played mm -hmm. basically any of the popular tag t tab target MMOs over these past like 20 or so years. On There's that, always developers that think that they're going to reinvent the wheel. And I always will, you know, all right, let's see with the reinvention. All right, well, it sucks. Go back to the wheel. Though they do have some other things like this reactive block system where certain enemy attacks will cause a purple indicator to appear with a shrinking circle. And if you time your block input correctly, you get what's called a perfect block. And they've also- That's crazy. Nobody's ever done that before. Wow.
added this action cam which removes your cursor and causes mouse uh -huh. movement to swing both the character and camera in sync this is basically added and mm -hmm. ideal for playing with a controller which makes a lot of sense as this game will be launching on yeah it's basically counters well for lost art and with these changes player feedback that i've seen has basically been overwhelmingly positive every single review that i've watched yeah. so far has said it feels much much better now obviously if you prefer action combat a la what is seen in black desert or terra right. well you're gonna be out of luck because that's not what this is but if you enjoy the combat systems of world of warcraft or final fantasy 14 or arc age throne in liberty should now this is just like in my opinion i don't think that this is it's not a 10 and it's not a 5 i think this is probably like a solid 7 it looks like it's all right yeah it, it, it's decent it's it's decent enough for me to want to try and play the game smo's uh meant to be tab targeted yeah, it's just, it's hard to play an MMO that's not tab target. I'll be right back be much more up your alley that said i have heard that things start off pretty slow for the first like 15 or 20 levels that's usually how games are up with time as you progress and get access to new skills mmo centric youtuber canon mm -hmm. specifically told me that combat starts slow and feels akin to like the world of warcraft classic warrior experience where you're kind of auto attacking you get a few skills that you use on cooldown but those cooldowns are relatively long it's pretty simplistic early on but to Towards the end game, as you unlock more skills and things progress, it gets a lot more similar to something like Arc Age's combat, which he said he personally really enjoys. Yeah, in general, I've heard really- Yeah, I mean, all that stuff looks fine to me. Like, at least so far, it looks okay positive things about the combat system, which is a big deal for me. Now, another mm -hmm. thing to note is that Throne in Liberty is a classless MMO where your character abilities are determined by the weapons you use. So instead of picking a mage, tank, or healer, you select like from New two World. of the game's seven weapons. There is the crossbow, dagger, greatsword, longbow, staff, sword and shield, and wand and tome. Each of these come with their own mm -hmm. skill tree that yeah, has all active that looks and passive good. abilities. And then from that, you select what you want, which is very similar to how mm -hmm. it works in like New World or Albion Online. Yeah, exactly. It does seem that there is a lot of skill interaction, customization, and combo potential with you having two weapons equipped at a time, and as such having two skill trees to pull from. I was also happy to hear that the game will not require constant back and forth weapon swapping. Thank goodness. Uh, instead, it looks like when you use a skill on your hotbar, it automatically swaps weapons for you. So say you're- I wish that they had that for New World. I think having to switch weapons manually feels like shit and it doesn't like in diablo 4 you can automatically switch weapons just by using a different ability as a barbarian and in poe 2 that's the possibility or that that's the that's the plan this is possible to do that so why can't we do that in new world because like in classic wow having to spam the macro or in bc spamming a macro to like swap your sword and shield and like your weapon on feels so fucking bad it should be that you hit the button and then it automatically equips your sword and shield using the longbow and daggers maybe you yep, open Diablo up from range casting something like ensnaring arrow and arrow vortex that will be using your bow but then as the enemy gets closer to you you may want to use your shadow mm -hmm. strike for your daggers but you won't need to manually swap yeah, to daggers clunky. just hitting the key bind for that ability will then swap weapons for mm -hmm. you this is a big relief to me as probably one of the biggest annoyances with these dual weapon games like ESO, New World, or Guild Wars 2 is like the required constant manual swapping between weapons that's what i dislike it feels like shit it just straight up feels like shit like i i really don't know what else to say about it besides that you see why it sounds like every person ever in the game is going to be playing the exact same set of abilities at some point yeah i mean i think that's usually what happens right you just need to rebalance things regularly most and then we want it feels bad yeah systems okay so combat feels a lot better there's more movement to it if you like tab target games if you like wow final fantasy 14 if you liked arc gauge you'll probably like the combat system here and while yeah. it is a weapon-based class system i'm also happy to hear that there's no hot bar swapping required all of that is really awesome and that's really that's one great. of the biggest things for me like the game feeling good to play is the number one priority as to whether or not i'm going to want to play a game long term a very that's close the only thing that matters if the game doesn't play well then it's a bad game it's Literally that simple i don't know why people think about oh yeah but the voice acting like i give a fuck about the voice acting oh yeah but the city all the npcs and rat new can get
But if you can pet the cat, I don't give a fuck. Second to that, in terms of importance, is actually just the combat. Content. Like what Game things play. are there to do, see, and experience the only thing in that the matters. game. As for throwing the liberty. What do they got? And is you want a story? Watch well, a movie. Well, it does appear like they have managed to deliver a traditional open world theme park MMO. Much of what you expect with this sort of game mm -hmm. is going to be here with a few noteworthy elements. The game's open world has been one of that's the cool. most praised elements outside of the yeah, combat that's that I Holy have seen shit. in every review. This is them it on is that massive, whale. massive, seamless, has no loading screens, instant teleportation, Holy even shit. going from character creator to playing is almost instantaneous. Oh my and God, while you're wow. playing the game, there are tons of players. I have seen gameplay clips Wait, this actually doesn't look that laggy. We have 100 plus players all in a small confined area, no. and that gameplay looks to be running fairly smoothly. No, no, there's no way they could do that. That's gotta be like illegal or something. There's no way it's gotta be fake, bro. Typical assortment of MMO questing will be in this open world. You'll be asked to kill X number of enemies, mm -hmm. gather resources, interact with objects, find NPCs, or go and fetch an item. Again, about what you expect. Also, right. what's pretty great here is how good it looks. Just fantastic. Uh, the visuals of this game are really, really good. What has impressed me the most- I, I think the visuals are okay. I think the visuals are a seven. You know, it, it, it's not Elden Ring. It's not Path of Exile 2. It, it's good though, it's good from everything I've seen has been the render distance. I mean, you can yeah. see things from miles away. I love me, that, being able to see out into the distance like that. That creates a really immersive experience. Mm -hmm. It really feels like feels you're real. in this world when you can see clearly so far, and even more so when there's tons of players running uh -huh. around as well. And the game's traversal system really rewards exploration with the ability to glide. You've got a grapple hook. And I'm going to be honest, guys. I feel like a lot of this looks really good. I'm going to say it. I think it looks really good. Mantling, there's a lot of uh, freedom of moving around and exploring in the environment. Now, what sort of activities besides those basic quests that I announced? Well, mm -hmm. you've got open world events. Every single zone has these hourly public events that take place where you'll have to complete some task for a- Somebody says Elden Ring is Asmon's reference to everything. That's right, because it's one of the best games ever made. And every single game I will compare to that game because that game is the standard of gameplay to me. You are exactly right. That is the standard of action gameplay. There is no game that has better action gameplay than Elden Ring that I have ever played. And in fact, nothing else even comes close except for Sekiro, which is also made by the same developer a few years before then reward like collecting wolf tails or killing goblins or whatever sometimes these will be pvp flagged as well so you'll have to fight off other players while attempting to complete your task killing players will even <laughs> cause them to drop items if that quest has you f farming for items that's and luckily, good that like you know doing pvp actually rewards you in pve as well uh that way it's like people don't view it as like just a waste of time it looks to involve uh, mainly focusing on the main story quest as it rewards the most experience, but then also in between doing the main story, weaving in some of these world events, exploration quests to bump up your level during any uh, main story quest bottlenecks. There's a few variety of dungeons in the game. There are open world non-instance dungeons, one of the things that I am most excited for. These are big sprawling areas that have tons of normal and elite enemy packs as well as bosses, but they're fully open, so players can come and go as they please. There's no yeah, instance. I mean New World has this, BDO has this. This is very cool. I like this kind of stuff. Dancing here. And another interesting twist to this is that during the daytime, they will be fully PVE. But during nighttime, which lasts for mm -hmm. about half an hour, it's like a two hour and, and then half an hour rotation from day to night. During those nighttime hours, the dungeons are then open PVP. Really, really cool twist to that to make it, uh, I guess, just mm -hmm. more engaging and add some variety there. There's also regular instance dungeons, nine of these in the game. These are for groups of six players. It's your typical setup. Form okay. your group of people, move into the dungeon, clear through groups of ads, and then take on a boss at the end and then All there's right, also the solo fine. content through Taydell's tower this is a solo i think that you need to have mmos there is like a huge subset of people that love the idea of playing mmos solo and having solo challenges in mmos i think for example like a lot of the runescape bosses that they've added have been solo bosses you look at the mage tower um, like I remember some of my, my favorite content in Lost Ark was soloing the Guardians. I just think that's the coolest thing. 
Like, I used to, back in the day, make videos of, like, my Warcraft character soloing bosses. Like, if you go back to, like, my original YouTube channel from, like, you know, 2008, uh, that was just, like, my character soloing stuff. I thought it was so fucking cool. It's kind of dumb. I don't think so. I think that people like the idea of being able to take on a challenge and then show off that they were able to do that challenge to other people in, like, the open world. I don't think that MMOs need to be constrained by the in my opinion, antiquated ideal, that gameplay needs to be cooperative for a game to be an MMO. I don't think that's the case. Like boss tower climb as you move through these floors from one to the next, mm -hmm. fighting increasingly more challenges. It doesn't mean bosses. it's bad Speaking to bosses, have it though, There are obviously. world bosses. It appears like they've got around 15 field bosses in the game, yeah. all located through various spots in the open world. These open world boss battles will There's be quite difficult dummies. and scaled up to the number of players, uh, potentially again over a hundred. And is all difficult. around the He's across not doing the board, anything. it looks like boss fights do have some interesting mechanics from what we've seen. Things like you know, don't stand in the fire, crowd control ads. Well, or it's like you know what this boss fight is for example right he's gonna do an aoe and you have to get behind the rock like that's like one mechanic that he probably has and that's it the group pull bombs away from other players stacking on top of each other any to open door any open open door any open world content like this is always just zerg jokes to prevent damage or heal line of sight mechanics you know if you've played mmos before you have a yeah. rough idea of what to expect from these boss fights but i have heard there's some interesting boss fights with interesting mechanical ver i will i do want to say that i like the fact that the numbers aren't massive in this game Variety. And then there is the open world PvP. PvP will be a big part of this game, mm -hmm. but it is also up to your discretion whether or not you engage it. Any yeah, of sure. the game's PvP will be clearly marked. There are timers that tell you when PvP events in the open world are going to be taking place. Like there will be certain zones. Yeah, that will certain zones become PvP zones actuate from being pvp yeah, flagged exactly. and then solely pve there's also those open this world looks events, really which good sometimes be pvp flagged but again you will know you can tell ahead of time exactly when this is going to happen so if you mm -hmm. want to avoid the pvp you can but if you enjoy pvp there will be a lot of it on offer and then also it's worth mentioning from everything we've seen there world is pvp like I, I think pvp and mmos is good and important but it should never be balanced around pvp and pvp should never be like a deciding variable in a game like that I think so and also like especially small scale PvP like PvP and MMOs should be focused on the spectacle of it like tower sieges and stuff like that it's a really big focus like castle on attacks play in this game it is not like 3v3 or 1v1 in PvE and PvP there's a guild ranking system with guild quest and contributions that level <laughs> up your guild this will do things like unlock new rewards access to new skills and open up new content you've yeah. got a guild hall that will have vendors in it as well as of course that looks your really nice guild members running I wonder how around. much you can and the guild hall it. also has a portal to guild raids which yeah. are essentially instanced versions of those open world boss fights and in terms of the Basic gameplay. Yeah, you want to be in a guild in this game. This game, well, it looks like it's going to work like this. You will be heavily incentivized to do a variety of activities. Which I'm a fan so of that. Focus I like on the that. main story quest because that is. I think that like social cooperation, it's like a weird thing, right? Where I think that you should have a lot of solo challenges, but you should also have group challenges. I think that the beauty of Classic WoW is that you had both. And playing in a guild should always be better, probably, than playing solo. Like, I'm not saying that you can't do anything if you're playing solo, but you should have, like, these capstone big challenges that you have to do inside of a guild. Is bang for your buck in terms of experience for leveling up, but that will be woven with doing world bosses, with doing open yeah. world PvP, with doing exploration quest and zone events. I've been told that everything is basically worth your time in the leveling up process. You won't That's have good. to choose between doing what you find most fun. Like maybe I really like PvP, but it really slows up your leveling process. Yeah. Well, apparently everything that you do, all of these various open world activities, will be rewarding towards your game progression and is worth your. Yeah, I think you just. Have separate content for solo and group it's so much easier to make and test solo content than anything takes multiple players anyway yeah you're definitely right like i would just like to see both 
time to do. Speaking of progression, let's talk about that. Now, okay. back during the beta, which had all of the autoplay features, which have since been removed, progression yeah. speed was a major complaint. Leveling up your character, your skills, acquiring gold and materials, everything took forever and felt overly grindy. But now, with the removal of the autoplay features, they basically retuned all of the game's progression and farming speeds. The time required... That's easy, yeah. Perfect. Problem solved. Like, this is one of the things that, like... This is why it's important to have, like, people that play games that are, like, more serious about it because they will run into these problems, like, more quickly than casual players. And that's what I was talking before about, like, PoE. Like, because really the end game is what's going to matter. Most people that are going to play the game in any serious capacity will hit the max level. And then what do you do whenever that happens? to level your character and skills was drastically reduced. The amount of gold and materials acquired from all sources was increased, and to go along with that, the mm -hmm. resources required for things like crafting and upgrading stuff has been reduced. Basically, across the board, the game was yeah. made way less grindy. Now, that said, That's great. it is still an MMO. It is still a Korean MMO. You and need to have a gear grind, and like uh, I played once human uh, as well, and I feel like the gear grind in that game is like really not that great at max level. Like just so you guys know, I played that game so much that my character is level 50. I have every single thing maxed out. My have a legendary weapon that's plus 10 and another weapon that's plus 10. All of my armor is fully upgraded. I've done everything. And uh, it was kind of a, uh, there's not really much else to do. That's it. Yeah, already? Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm already done. Beat, the, beat, the, beat everything absolutely a lot of grind here this is going to be a grind focused game but right. at least no, now it does feel much more in line with typical mmo progression <laughs> and not artificially inflated like it was during the beta when they yeah. had all those autoplay features and expected that everyone's character would be farming 24 7 either because a person was manually playing or because i think autoplay is the biggest joke especially for farming in a game like this because like, autoplay in something like Honkai Star Rail makes sense because it's a mobile game that you can lose connection for. But, like, a PC-based MMO, like, autoplay has no business being in the game. And I just think that a game would be better designed if you rebalanced it around not having it. Because, really, like, so you have two different things. So, you, what's autoplay for? Autoplay is for easy, repeatable content that players don't want to do. Okay, well then why have it? Why not remove the need for autoplay and then also remove autoplay, take the entire thing out of the game, and it doesn't matter. Just completely get rid of it. Turn on the autoplay features and left their game running. Yeah, it if, is a game, really if something awesome can be autoplayed, that it's the boring. game itself seems to be really fun to play. <laughs> the gameplay has been drastically improved, and it's got a lot of interesting open world yeah. content. They really do seem to be delivering a solid we'll about that. open world theme park MMO. However, the bad news is that, as predicted, it is pretty much confirmed at this point that the game is very pay to win. What? So no! No, who could have? No way. No, bro. Really? Can you believe that? How could this happen? Starters, the cash shop called Lottie's Star uh -huh. sells the following. You can purchase the premium currency, yeah. which is known as Lucent, and with that currency, you can do things like purchase emotes for your character or cosmetics to look pretty. That's or fine. you can purchase items that remove the experience loss on death. And it uh, turns out that if you get 20 of these deaths that have this kind of stacking debuff, you eventually get reduction to things like your movement speed, which is pretty awful. So trying to reduce- Oh, that sounds off. That sounds terrible. So you lose experience whenever you die? Use this death penalty will be pretty important. But then probably the biggest, uh, most glaring thing is the fact that the game's marketplace is essentially a real money auction house. Players oh. who find good weapons and gear can post them on the marketplace and then that those items will be purchased by other players with Lucent, which is- And then, okay, so again, uh, I made a chart for this in case anybody uh, wasn't aware of this. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, this was a, uh, let me see if I can find this. It'll take a minute. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Okay. Um, 
So this is a chart that I made in order to be a, uh, a tool that people need to understand uh, the way that the games are, okay? So uh, basically, pay to win trash is whenever you just spend money to buy gear. But if you spend money to buy gold that buys gear, then it's not pay to win. That's how it works, guys. I think I had a better one for this too. What? Yeah. I I I'll find it. Give me a minute. Um, fuck. You know what? I'm actually not finding it. Oh, this is too bad. Oh, no. Well, I'm sure it must be somewhere. The premium Makes total cash sense. Yeah. currency. So any player can Got spend too many real tabs. money to get Lucent and then use that to purchase some of the most powerful items in the game for their character, uh -huh. which is about as direct pay for power as it Didn't gets. Save it. Now, I with that said, you can only it. buy the base level versions of this gear and will still have to enhance mm -hmm. it through the gear's leveling system to get the most powerful version of gear in the game. And that enhancing I did process save it. requires a lot of material. There it is. This is it. Gentlemen... This is this is gaming in the year 2023, and tomorrow will be year, gaming in the year 2024. You're not buying the items, you're buying the gold that buys the items. ...that can only really be gathered by actually through the gear's leveling system uh -huh. to get the most powerful version of gear in the game. And that Mysterious ar precious armor growth stone. Hmm, I wonder where you get those process requires a lot of materials that can only really be gathered by actually playing. I was basically told that the pay to win is pretty similar to Lost Ark where Lucent is the premium currency that's that That's bad. That's really bad. It's more like Lost Ark's gold, while Solent, which is the gold in this game, it's acts like more crystals. like Lost Ark's silver. And it does seem like that oh, in-game oh, oh, earned okay. currency and it. not the premium currency will be the biggest bottleneck for player power at the moment, at least. Uh -huh. But besides that, the fact is free-to-play players can technically farm for the premium currency by finding items that they sell in the marketplace that other people purchase with the premium currency. So even- Oh God, bro. Like, I love, I love free-to-play copium. It's like the funniest fucking thing to me to hear these people. They're like, well, no, see, like if I, if I play the game, if I wake up at uh, nine in the morning and I play the game until midnight and then I do that every day for seven weeks, then I can be as far as a guy that just spent money. I can keep up. I can keep up. I can do it. Jesus, man. It's just, it's so dystopian. And if you don't spend real money yourself to get the game's premium currency, yeah. you'll find items, you'll sell those items that people will buy with premium currency, which then gives you that premium currency. A lot of now, MMOs of have done this before with these sort of systems where there's a premium currency that the free-to-play players can still readily acquire yeah, of by course. selling to the people who are doing the swiping. Well, the, those... what, what, what it means to say free-to-play players, these are called second-class citizens, okay? It's like the slave class situations again of exchanging there's time. the aristocracy which are the ones that spend thousands of dollars on a video game <laughs> and then there's the slaves that want to spend thousands of hours on the video game oh god how do we get here it's just so fucking ridiculous it's, it's, everything about this is so fucking ridiculous for money, that's pretty much what they're presenting here. Now, I do want to add here as one final note when it comes to the monetization yeah. that, uh, as mentioned, I watched a few different reviews and Canons in particular when he was uh -huh. addressing the game's uh, monetization and sort of the pay to win elements of it. He did note that playing in his fully free to play guild wh where they're not doing any swiping, they're not buying items in the marketplace by spending real cash, they have still managed to be the top guild on their server. They're the top PvP guild ranked number one, and they have also several spinoffs of their guild. See, I, d I don't like this mindset. I actually disagree with this mindset. Here's why. It's because, the, it, just because you're able to overcome an obstacle doesn't mean that the obstacle isn't there. Like, yeah, there are people that can jump over a hurdle, but they still had to jump over a hurdle. And so I like, think about it like this. If you, let's say you're in shape, right? You're an in shape guy. 
and you're running a race and you, you've got to jump over three hurdles and the person next to you is Nakato Avocado. You're probably going to beat him, right? You're going to get there be, you're going to get to the end before he does. It's boogie. You're going to you're going to get to the finish line first, right? Okay. So what happens whenever it's you that has to jump over the hurdles, but there's another guy who's as equally in shape and physically capable as you are who doesn't have to jump over the hurdles? Then who wins? He wins. Because he didn't have to do that. And that's the point. Just because you can overwhelm and beat a player that spends money by being free to play doesn't mean that a person of your equal skill couldn't be in a better position than you are than you are just simply by spending more money. It's like a force multiplier. You have a chance though? Sure. But am I the only person that like if I feel like so this is the way this is the way I, I look at it. And this doesn't make me not, not want to play the game. Like, it just makes me not want to take the game seriously. Um, so, like, if I know that the only difference between me winning and losing is spending money, then I don't really care about the game. There's no meaning in it. Like, and, and, and this is just somebody I could spend the money. I could spend $1,000 to play the game. Okay, great. Oh, wow. Who cares? It's like, in a weird way, it's like, Having the money to do it makes it worth less to me. Is that weird? That are all within the top 10. And again, they are not swiping. They are fully a fully free to play guild. So I guess that goes to show you if you're looking to be competitive, at least as yeah. of now, it doesn't look like you will be required to do swiping. So I will wrap up this by saying I am super happy. And the most important thing to me when I was thinking about this game was mm -hmm. them improving the combat and was the content of the game interesting enough to entice me to play. It seems like that yeah, is going to be the decent. case. It seems like combat is way better. It's yeah. definitely something that I want to jump in and get my hands on now. So so much about the game looks really really good it, it's a massive shame about the monetization but it's also not unexpected and at this point i'm just thinking who could have I'll ever get... expected this what enjoyment i can out of it until it feels like i need to spend hundreds of dollars in order to progress and hopefully that never happens hopefully just playing free to play i can enjoy myself that's the game plan right now mm -hmm. we'll let you know how it pans out when the game officially launches globally now as of now that is planned for some time in 2024 we are expecting in the first or second quarter although no confirmation as of yet has been announced i wouldn't also be surprised i should mention if we see some slight differences between the korean and global versions in particular i think some changing to how the monetization may very well happen but only slight why would you think that i don't think that's gonna happen i mean amazon's publishing it oh it's a good thing lost ark isn't pay to win then right <laughs> oh, they just settled that didn't they differences maybe they rein in the pay to win a bit but we'll see we'll see like i said the most important thing is is the game fun to play does the combat feel good and is yeah. there interesting content it appears like the answer to all of that is yes even with the presence of this yeah, pay to somebody win. says something in here i i really i really cannot emphasize this enough any game that has a competitive component to it you are a cuck if you free to play it Explain to me what the difference between being a cuck and being a free-to-play player is. I don't think there is one. It's basically the same thing. And stuff. That part of it is the most important part of it for me. That the mm -hmm. game is fun to play, that it feels good to play, and that there's entertaining and enjoyable content. And uh -huh. with this open world... With all of these systems, with the PvP stuff, I'm definitely looking forward to giving this a shot. And we'll have to see how all that monetization again plays out here with the global release. But that does it for me. Generally, I am happy to hear that Throne and Liberty is actually a good game with some disappointing monetization attached to it. I but, wonder uh, how many different things that you could replace that exact thing with. I'm happy that it's a good game, but I'm disappointed that it's pay to win. Man. You should just do this outro and then just fucking put in, you know, this game is it terrorist. Yeah, a million of these other games. Yeah, it's always the same. Here we go. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. I think this is why the MMOs never really pop off anymore. I think them being pay to win is a huge factor.
I'll go ahead and I'll link you guys the video. I think this is really good. It's a Force Gaming video. We finally hit a million subscribers. Look at that. Holy shit. So yeah, Warframe has the same monetization. Oh, I don't know what Warframe does. I haven't really played that before, so I can't really say. But like, uh... Was a Hammerhead MMO? Yeah. I think the reason why is because like for a lot of people... Like, being able to spend money and outperform people is fundamentally not what people play MMOs for. They don't want to be able to just have somebody outspend them and then outperform them. That's just not it. Want to watch Cannon's video on it as well? Yeah, if somebody wants to link it to me at some point, I'll watch it. I mean, I want to play more Monster Hunter today, to be honest. But um, aside from that, yeah, I'll probably try it out and uh, you know play it whenever it comes out. I'll tell you guys this, though. When Throne and Liberty comes out, I will play this game. I will 100% play this game. Absolutely. fucking lutely So it's not like I'm upset about this or, you know, angry. I'm not going to play it anymore. I assumed that it was going to be this type of garbage. And so there it is. I was right. I played Blade and Soul and lots of oilers from Saudi were spending to beat free-to-play players and enjoyed it. Well, of course they did. It's like you can't... You can't literally, like, pay to kill poor people... So you just do the next best thing, which is you just pay to kill poor people in video games. This is something like I've got to I've got to keep this. Uh, I, like if I have a hall of fame of like chatter messages, I feel like this one. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, not that one. That's just some other bullshit. Um, this one would be there. MMO equals multi marketing opportunity. Man. Man.